Hello everyone and welcome to part two of this series on the pathway to love and how to find happily ever after. So many people are doing it wrong and this series will help you not only to find true love but to find happily ever after, to find what you were truly looking for and what your heart truly seeks. It's so sad today that so many people get divorced and so many people who aren't divorced have miserable marriages. They're not happy in their marriage. Many relationships end with broken hearts and pain and fighting and just regret and anger and so much that God never intended for us to have. And so how can we find true love? Why are so many songs that talk about true love, about how a love hurts you, how it's thorns and pain, because that's not true love. True love makes you better. True love makes you stronger, more confident, helps you to find yourself, be happier, and be more fulfilled. Whereas a false counterfeit love steals all of that. It makes you more unhappy, more sad. It takes away your self-confidence and your self-esteem. It makes you more codependent. You lose yourself in the relationship. You end up fighting all the time, becoming you know, someone you're not, losing your hobbies, and so on. So in order to have happily ever after, we need to know what true love is. That's exactly exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video. If you're like me, you're just tired of all the divorce in this country, of all the heartbreak, of all the pain, and it's because the media and TV and movies, they tell us wrong. They teach us wrong. All of these things which are supposedly about love, it's no wonder most people in Hollywood aren't married. In fact, they're divorced one, two, three, four, five times because they don't know what it takes to make love work work. So in order to make love work, you need to know what it is, how to find it, and how to keep it. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about right after this. Hello everyone, my name is Brian Mercier, President of Catholic Truth. Make sure to check out our other Love and Relationships videos on our Love and Relationship playlist on this channel. Also check out our TikTok and our Instagram and all of that down below. I was speaking at a conference once in Pennsylvania, and during the question and answer time, a couple stood up and asked me, you and your wife look like you have such a great and wonderful marriage. You know, can you just tell us all, like, what does it take? Maybe what is the one thing to look for in order to have a successful marriage? I said there's two things. Number one, I mean, there's many things, but two of the big ones are number one, finding the right person in the first place and not compromising, and number two, actually falling in love, finding true love and not the counterfeit of love. Many people say, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, but many relationships are much less than loving. I know people who are in abusive relationships and they're like, oh, I love you, babe, I love you, babe, and he's abusing you. It's not love and you're lying to yourself. And so we have to know what love is if you actually want a relationship and stop compromising because as long as you're with someone you should not be with and you know that in your heart, you can't be with the person that God actually actually has for you, the happily ever after intended for you. A story about what true love is. I had a friend named Dan, and Dan was a good looking guy, big guy, strong, all the girls liked him, and he knew that, and so he used to get with girls and hook up with them constantly, make out with them, do more than that with them, and anyone he could get with, he used to get with, and he got a lot of girls. And then, you know, after a while, one day he met this beautiful girl, long black hair, big blue eyes, all the guys in school thought she was gorgeous, and Dan Dan wanted her. And when he met her and started talking to her, he immediately realized that she was different. She said that she wouldn't date him because he's not the kind of guy that she dates. She's looking for a real man who will treat her right. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, like this, like put him on his heels. He's like, what? Nobody talks to me like that. And she's like, I'm sorry, but I won't date you. And he's like, but, you know, I want to get to know you more. And, you know, the more he talked to her, the more he realized how sweet and kind and loving she was, but also how strong she was, you know, and how she had morals and virtues. And she stood for something. And this really made Dan like her even more. He's, he's like, wow, this girl is the real thing. And even though she would acquiesce and talk to him sometimes, she would not date him. And so, you know, Dan came up to me and he told me 
uh, Brian, listen, I really, really like this girl. And she's, she's real. You know, she's not like all the other girls that I just hook up with who are like shadow empty shells. <laughs> and so he's like, listen, Brian, I promise you, if I have the opportunity to date her, I'm actually going to date her. I'm not going to hook up with her. I'm not going to sleep with her. I'm not going to do anything that might get her to get pregnant or have a disease or anything else because I don't want anything to happen to this girl. I like her too much. I want to protect her, in fact. I mean, he's telling me this. This is a man who's the player with all of these women who can get any women, woman he wants. And all of a sudden, he wants to respect this woman. He wants to protect this woman. And he wants to date her and get to know her on a deep level. Now, let me ask you, which one of these scenarios was true love? The hookups, the cheap dates, you know, the, the ones who will just give their bodies away for nothing, or the woman who actually respected herself and Dan wanted to serve and protect and have a deep loving relationship with, a meaningful relationship. Obviously, the second one. Dan himself wanted to change because of this girl. He wanted to become better. He wanted to do better. He wanted to make better decisions and he wanted to treat her right. Now, saying that out loud, what does that say about the other girls? What does that say about how he treated them and how they let themselves be treated? Now, some of these women probably fancied, oh, he loves me. You know, we're hooking up together or we're in a relationship and we're getting it really. We're just sleeping together and he's using you for your body. That's what it is. It's not love. But this other relationship is true love. And here's the lesson of love. True love does what's best and good for the other person. Whereas false love and lust does what's better for oneself. Lust seeks to take. It's selfish. It wants to get pleasure for oneself, even if you have to sacrifice and empty the other person and not care about them. Whereas true love seeks to give to the other person, seeks to make them happy, seeks to make them holy, seeks to serve them and do what's good for them, even if it's a sacrifice on our part and we have to empty ourselves to make that sacrifice. Even if it's hard, we want to do what's right for them, for their mind, for their heart, for their body, for their soul together, we want to do what's good for them. We care for them. And in fact, John Paul II, uh, Pope, he's the one who wrote Love and Responsibility. He said, the more responsibility you feel for another person, the more true love there is. The more you feel responsible and, and love them, you care about their mind, their heart, their soul, you want to lead them to God and not away from God, the more true love there is. So that's what love is. It's caring for another person and choosing to love them over yourself. It's selflessness and not selfishness. And this can only happen if we find someone who is capable of love. Many people act at the outset like they're capable of love and they put on a good act and they go, you know, talk a good talk. But the reality is so many people are struggling today, are broken today, have mental health issues today, and they don't reveal it to you until it, you're trapped and it's too late, which is why you don't want to rush into a relationship. You don't want to talk to the person every waking hour, every day, texting them all the time, because this bonds you prematurely and it blinds you from knowing who that person is. You want to find a person, not in theory, but in actuality, who is loving and has the ability to love you, has the capability and the strength to hold your heart, which is so fragile, so that, you know, if you give them your heart, they're not going to drop it and shatter it on the ground. You want to find someone who's loving, who's kind, who's virtuous, who has the ability to communicate, who has the ability to sacrifice themselves for you and for your future children, who's not going to be selfish, who's not addicted to drugs or porn, who doesn't lie, doesn't have any self-destructive issues. You know, and so we need to find someone who is actually capable of love and we need to be that person as well. And if we're not, we need to get counseling or we need to get some self-help books. I, there's a great book called The Boundaries in Dating by Dr. Cloud and Dr. Townsend and it talks about the pitfalls to avoid when finding true love and one of them is rushing into relationships so fast and you just spend every waking moment with the person right away and you ditch all your friends and everything that you don't even get to know the person. It's a facade. It's not real. The person you think you know is not the real person. It's deeper. After a year of dating, my wife and I realized we were pretending on some things. We were wearing masks. We weren't being fully vulnerable with each other. And so you said, we said, oh, you know what? We need to work on that. And so we really tried to do that. And we tried to open ourselves to each other. I mean, about a year is a good time 
to date because you get to see people in all seasons, see if they have seasonal depression, see how they are around your family, see how they act in relation to your parents, with their friends, and different things like that. And so we need to find true love. True love is giving. I mean, I remember recently my daughter was sick at three in the morning. She was throwing up. She threw up 15 times in four hours because she had a stomach virus, the poor little thing. And my wife told me I need to go to the store. Even though I was so exhausted and tired, I love my little girl. And so I wanted to do what's best for her. So despite the fact that I could hardly keep my eyes open, I went to find a 24-hour store in the middle of nowhere so I could get her the medication she needed, some Pedialyte, and I brought it back for her. I did the same thing for my wife when she was sick at two in the morning and I went out and got some the medication she needed. She woke me up out of a dead sleep, but because I cared for her more than myself, I did this even though it was hard. So true love is doing what's right for a person even when it's hard. It's sacrificing for the other person and just as Jesus sacrificed himself out of love on the cross. If you're in a relationship where everything is easy, everything's fun, everything's attraction, everything's pleasure, everything's, you know, go 100 miles an hour, it's leading to destruction. You're going to go off a cliff. That is not the path to true love. We need to create a firm foundation, which is going to last forever. And that is only built on love, true love. I mean, attraction is good. Feelings are good. Ple- you know, pleasure of like being around a person and feeling butterflies and, you know, nervous and just that, you know, that puppy love, that those are good. That's not bad. But that's the first step of what love is. If true love is a staircase. Attractions, feelings, and emotions are the very first step. Most people think that attraction and feeling, if you feel it really strongly and all you can do is think about a person, it must be true love when in fact the opposite is true. It just means you're strongly attracted to them, which is a good thing. But true love is an entire staircase more. Attraction is just the door that opens up that door to the staircase. It's a hard, long climb up that stairway to true love, which is why there's no such thing as love at first sight. No such thing. Absolutely, and in all other ways, impossible to find, you know, true love at first sight. It's impossible because love is a decision based on a mature decision of who the person really is and not who you want them to be, who the person really is and, you know, a decision to love them. So you love who they are as a person deeply, profoundly. You fall in love with them. You say, yeah, I want to spend the rest of my life with them. And they are capable of loving me in return, my children kissing them to bed and being a good role model for them. When we have all of these factors, there's a good chance that we have found true love and you will find the relationship that you are looking for. Remember, true love makes you better, happier, stronger, more fulfilled, and more free. Whereas a false love leads to fighting, pain, heartbreak, depression, codependence, and losing yourself in the relationship. Check out our other videos. We have so many if you would like to know more. We have a three, it's old now, but we have a three-part series called The Pathway to Love in our Love and Relationships folder. Watch that whole thing. It's about an hour long and all. It will teach you how to find true love. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do us a favor and like this video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts on this. And please share this video with others because our world is so confused and they have no idea what love is and they're being deceived on every level. Check out our Instagram and our PayPal and our Patreon and everything else down below. And thank you so much for watching.